These are the lecture notes for Chapter 2, Chemistry Comes Alive. Um, let me get it into slideshow view. I can already tell there's a lot of slides, so I'll, I'll try to, um, you know, as usual, I'll try to go through um, ones that aren't that important uh, faster and then slow down and explain the more difficult stuff. Um, okay, so why it matters. This is um, chemistry being the second chapter in anatomy and physiology kind of surprises some students. Um, and we teach it because uh, this information comes up on the T's test, which most of you will end up having to take or, or something similar. So anyway, um, and chemistry is, is the, you know, chemistry is going to come up in all the chapters, really, because um, chemical reactions that occur within our cells are, are really the basis for um uh, our, us being alive, I guess. But anyway, again, I'm going to skip that video and let's see. Um, the body is made up of many chemicals. Chemistry underlies all physiological reactions. So movement, for example, the contraction of muscles and the contraction and the, um, sending of conduction of nerve impulses. All of that has to do with the flow of ions and charge, and, and um, of course, those are chemicals. And digestion, um, understanding digestion, you have to understand breakdown reactions and um, enzymes and that kind of thing. Um, the pumping of the heart, the nervous system I just mentioned. So we can break down chemistry really into two um, topics, basic chemistry and biochemistry. And we're going to do basic chemistry first. Um, and this hopefully is a review for a lot of you. You've, you've heard a lot of these terms like matter. Matter is something that we learn starting in elementary school. That's anything that has mass and occupies space. Um, or in other words, it has a weight and a volume. The states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. And then um, when we talk about matter, we talk about energy as well. Um, it's kind of like when you learn anatomy and physiology, they're uh, the principle of complementarity. Um, they complement each other. So energy is the capacity to do work or put matter into motion. Energy does not have mass, nor does it take up space. The greater the work done, the more energy it uses up. And here's an animation. This is slide number nine. If you want to write this down, I'm not going to show um, a whole lot of, of uh, animations and videos. Actually, I'm sorry. This is just an animation, so um, there's no video here, I don't think. Anyway, um, you might want to go to slide nine and see if it shows a video. But um, we're going to start talking. Let's see. We're going to um, move on with energy. There are two types. There's kinetic and potential. Kinetic is energy and action or motion, and potential is stored energy. In chemicals, um, the potential energy is stored in chemical bonds. So chemical energy is stored in bonds. The potential energy of um, like glucose, for example, that gets broken down for energy by our cells, that potential energy is stored in the chemical bonds between the um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms of glucose. Electrical energy results from movement of charged particles. That can be the movement of electrons. It can be the movement of, in many cases in this course, it's going to be the movement of sodium ions and potassium ions. Um, mechanical energy is directly involved in moving matter. Um, mechanical energy, for example, is like um, when when you walk, you know, um, or when you pick something up that's heavy, you know. Radiant or electromagnetic energy is energy that travels in waves, and we see this energy on the electromagnetic spectrum. It includes heat, visible light, ultraviolet light from the sun, and x-rays. 
All right, energy may be converted from one form to another. When we turn on a lamp, that converts electrical into light energy. <clears throat> and every time energy is converted, some energy is lost as heat. I mean, it's not destroyed or created, but it's lost as heat. In, in other words, it becomes heat and it's not usable to us. Um, all right, so in section 2.2, we'll move on to atoms and elements. We really honestly don't talk about energy that much. Um, that it does, it's not something, you need to know the definitions, but it's not something that comes up very often. So um, this, this does though. So all matter is composed of elements. These are substances that are found on the periodic table. Now you're not gonna have to know the periodic table like you would in a chemistry class, but you are going to have to know some of the elements. You'll have to know the name and the symbol. Um, so if you look down here, four elements make up 90%, 96% of the body. So you definitely need to know their names and the symbol for each of these. And that would be carbon, which is a C, oxygen, which is O, hydrogen, which is H, and nitrogen, which is N. Again, I'll remind you, there's some kind of a glitch, and I have to click on the pin twice, but these are definitely ones you need to know. Nitrogen is in, and um, there are nine elements that make up 3.9% of the body and 11 that make up uh, less than 0.01%. Um, I will say that you may also want to know sulfur, which is S, sorry about that, and phosphorus, which is P. And um, if, if it shows a periodic table, I'll, I'll highlight all of those. Elements are made up of atoms, and you're going to need to know uh, atomic structure. You're going to need to know um, about protons, neutrons, and electrons, you know. So um, the atomic symbol for an element, here's two listed that I told you you had to know. The O is the symbol for oxygen. C is the symbol for carbon. H is the symbol for hydrogen. Um, and N is the symbol for nitrogen, S is the symbol for sulfur, and P is the symbol for phosphorus. Um, and then um, sometimes it, it doesn't seem like the symbol matches up with the name, but sodium's Latin name is natrium, and that's why sodium is Na, capital N, little a, and potassium's Latin name is callium, so um, the symbol is K. And here we go. Here are some of the, um, the atoms and their symbols. And again, sulfur and phosphorus. Don't forget those. Here we go. <laughs> All right, you're, um, you probably see calcium, and that's CA. Calcium and sodium and chloride and magnesium. A lot of these are going to be seen as ions, and you can see that over here in the chart. Calcium um, is an ion that's used in nerve impulses, um, blood clotting. It's required for muscle contraction. You can see that over in the functions. It's stored as a mineral in our bones and our teeth, and it's needed by our bones and our teeth. But calcium is typically going to have a charge when you see the symbol. Same thing with potassium. It's just like sodium. It's going to have a plus one charge, whereas calcium had a plus two. Here's the word sulfur and the symbol, and the word phosphorus and the symbol, because those are probably almost as important as the four that were listed, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Um, you find phosphorus in DNA and sulfur in DNA and protein. Um, moving down, we have sodium, which is normally going to be seen with a plus charge. Um, we'll see it as an ion, chloride with a minus one charge, magnesium typically is going to have a plus two charge like the calcium. It's not written here, but I'll just tell you. Um, and then iodine and iron are some others that are important in um, composing the human body. So I would go ahead and learn these um, as well as the four, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. You're going to see them, so I, I would just go ahead and learn them, the name and the symbol. 
Um, okay, so now let's talk about the structure of atoms. Uh, the subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Hopefully you've at least heard of those before. What you need to learn is the charge on each one and where it is located in the atom. So a proton carries a positive one charge and it's located in the nucleus of the atom. Neutrons Sorry, um, neutrons don't have a charge at all. They're neutral, and they are located inside the nucleus as well. And then electrons have a negative charge, um, and they are located, um, they move around the, um, outside of the nucleus. So for right now, we can just say they're located outside the nucleus. <clears throat> Um, here, there's two different types of models. Um, there's the orbital model and then the planetary model. The orbital model represents electrons as a cloud, and the planetary model shows electrons um, like orbiting around the nucleus, which is a little bit misleading. Both are helpful, though, um, but it's a little bit misleading to think that electrons orbit around the nucleus. So here's the nucleus of the atom. Electrons actually move randomly very, very, very fast within what we call electron clouds. So um, we can tell you, the most we can tell you about an electron is where it is um, found most of the time. So it's moving so fast that it may jump out here sometimes, but mostly it's found in a certain area. And, we, you know, we know a little bit enough to tell you um, it, the region that it's found in. But when we show it like this, even though the electrons don't orbit the nucleus, we can see that there are two electrons in this atom. And so the, the planetary model is useful as well. Um, and as you can see, uh, the red structures are the protons and there's two of them the yellow structures are the neutrons these are located in the nucleus and um, the neutrons have a neutral charge and then there's two electrons because you have to have the same number of protons and electrons and that is because that would the two protons would give you a plus two charge and the two electrons would give you a minus two charge and the charge, the positive and negative charges have to equal in order for the atom to be neutral. So, and atoms are neutral. So the protons and electrons in an atom are going to be equal. What we were just looking at was actually an atom of helium. I don't know why that didn't underline, but we were actually looking at an atom of helium um, it had two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus, and then two electrons were residing outside the nucleus in the electron clouds. Um, hydrogen is an element that has one proton, zero neutrons in its, in its most common form, and one electron. Notice the protons and the electrons have to be equal, but the neutrons do not. Sometimes the neutrons are equal to the protons and the electrons, like with helium, but that is only, it's, I guess, a coincidence. It's not, um, you don't always find neutrons equaling the protons and electrons. Lithium, which is in group one, along with sodium, lithium has three protons and three electrons, and then it has four neutrons. So let's talk about the atomic number, the mass number, and the um, isotopes and atomic weight. Okay, so that's isotope. So let's talk about it here, I guess. Um, the atomic number, for example, for hydrogen is the number of protons. So the atomic number for hydrogen is the same as its number of protons, which means its atomic number is one. So hydrogen has one proton. It also has an atomic number of one. 
and then its mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons, and so it's also going to have a mass number of one. That's for hydrogen. So if we wanted to draw